Hello, in this video I'm going to be going over a past paper question involving friction. Um, the, the question involves limiting equilibrium. If It's a single particle question, but with statics questions, I, um, things are not moving, I would always, first of all, look to see if the equilibrium is limited and friction is involved, to see if it's limiting, because in some ways, that makes things quite straightforward in the sense that we can just say that the friction, the model that we use, is F is equal to mu R, where R is the normal contact force. R is the reaction force, reaction force, or also called the normal contact force, contact force. So we've got F equals mu R and we're told that it's one fifth in uh, the question. So that must mean that F is equal to one fifth R, which I'm going to mark on the diagram. Now the question here says it's on the point of moving up the plane, which is why on my diagram I've got it moving down. The friction, which always goes to oppose motion, is moving down the plane. So that's um, R over 5 there. OK, so that's R, because it's on the point of moving up the plane, friction will be opposing that, so it's going down the plane. Um, the other thing I should mention is I've written the weight in as 4.9. You might see it also, you might mark it as 0.5g. The weight is equal to mg. So 0.5 g, but I've just gone straight for putting uh, working that out. That's 4.9 newtons because our default for g, unless stated otherwise, is 9.8. That comes to 4.9 newtons. Okay, so that's uh, all the forces on the diagram. We should now be ready to do our resolving. Uh, let's resolve parallel first. This was a past paper question, by the way, and um, back then, it's from a few years back, looking at it was 10 marks. I'm not sure if it would be that now, but what would be the case is that a lot of the marks would be for your original equations. Um, back in, um, in this particular question, three marks were given for each equation, which seemed quite generous. I wonder whether that would be the uh, case now. Either way, there are going to be quite a lot of marks early on, so make sure you take care, not only because you will get through the question more readily, but also because you will be, the, the marks are front loaded, so if things go wrong, you will get the majority of, later on, you'll get the majority of the marks anyway, because that's how, how mechanics is, is marked, probably maths in general, but definitely mechanics. OK, so resolving parallel. Well, the one thing that's not going to come into it is the R. So that's because that's per, that's perpendicular to it. So we've got a component of T. Let's think about that first of all. That will have a component going up the plane there. Now, we just have to decide whether that's T cos 20 or T sine 20. Well, it's T cos 20 in this case because it's next to the 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 20 degree angle I've marked on the diagram. So it's T cos 20 there. Okay, so that's because it's marked next to the angle there, T cos 20. Okay, then we've got the component of the weight down the plane. The component of the weight that's coming down here. Well, we've marked on the angle here 40 degrees here. So that angle's marked 40. We've got all this space here. So the next situation, it's going to be sine. So that's 4.9 sine 40 is the component of the weight. And of course, we've also got the friction, which is going exactly down the, the, the plane. OK, so let's do our resolving equations. So we'll be ready to do that now. Um, so we've got up the plane is T cos 20. Then we've got down the plane, they're both down the plane. We've got the friction and the component of the weight. So that's minus 4.9 sine 40. 
and minus r over 5 going down the plane equals 0. OK, so that's uh, that's the parallel plane. As I say, in the, the mark scheme I'm looking at, there's actually four marks already. One for three for the actual equation and one for getting F, using f equals mu r, probably the easiest question we'll normally find on a mechanics paper. So anyway, resolving perpendicularly. Now this time, the friction, which is r over 5, won't come into that equation because it's parallel. But we've got r going exactly upwards. We've now got the component of t going this way, which will be t sine 20. Because of this space here, we've marked the angle here, and obviously we've got the, the two in the opposite direction anyway. So that's t sort of in a perpendicular direction. So that will be t sine 20. And then we've got the component of the weight, this 4.9 Newton weight, which is next to the 40 degrees I've marked on the diagram. So that's 4.9 cos 40. Okay, so that's um that's uh that's, so that's the um that's the component of forces should, which should enable us to write our equation. So that gives us t uh, t sine twenty going out to the plane plus r going up the plane. They go they're both going in that direction. But going the opposite direction is the 4.9 cos 40. Equals zero. I say, in the actual scheme I'm looking at, we've got seven marks but uh, with that. But I suspect it might be, might be more like five now. But still, five marks for getting our equations right. And then probably another three for for actually uh, solving it, which is actually going to be a bit more work, a bit fiddly. So we're going to substitute for r, because from this equation here, we've got r equals 4.9 cos 40 minus t sine 20. OK, so we've got the, those two. So we can substitute for r. From that R, we can substitute into there. So we're going to substitute for R. Just taking care. So that's T cos. We've got that's T cos 20 minus 4.9 sine 40. Minus one fifth, taking the fraction outside R, which is four point nine cos forty minus T sine twenty. Oops, sorry about that. equals to zero. Okay, so that's our equation. So that should enable us to, if we can rearrange that, we can. Um, we should be able to get a value of t. So bringing the t bits together, we get, um, and multiplying out, we got t cos 20 there. And when we times this by a fifth, being careful of the double negative there, that's going to be plus one fifth of sine 20 t. Let's put the t in the middle of that. Okay, so t, and then we've got the minus 4.9 sine 40, and then we've got the minus one fifth times 4.9 cos 40 equals zero from multiplying that, that out by the one fifth. Okay, let's take the t over to the other side uh, so we've got t cos 20 oh let's factorize first and bring the t over to the other side so we're factorizing taking the t out so it's cos 20 plus one fifth sine 20 
then equals to 4.9 sine 40 plus one fifth times 4.9 cos 40. Now I'm going to use the calculator. I didn't use it up to now because it can get a bit messy if we try and uh, you, you obviously using the memory it's possible to work these values out. But I'm going to put these uh, put uh, work use the calculator now. These bits this bit here comes to 1.00809 blah 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 and this bit here comes to 3.90038 blah 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 so dividing the two So dividing the two, we'll get t equals to that 3.900 over 1.008. Make sure you use exact or use the memory or store them in some way so that we're not getting any, any inaccuracy. But to three significant figures, that's going to go, come to 3.87 newtons. OK, so that's the first part of the question done. The second part it would be um um it would take quite it wouldn't be really much difference really if we were to do the second part just that friction would be reversed so instead of going through that in detail what i might quickly do is just copy and paste what i've done and just see how, and so quickly how the um how that changes so um i'll just do that in a moment okay so So this part is now moving on the point of moving down the plane, so the friction reverses. So what I've done is, um, instead of going through the whole thing again, I've copied the question, uh, the, copied the equations I've done, and it'd be useful to see how it changes. Obviously the components are the same, but friction's reversed, so this changes to plus here. It changes to plus okay so that then um, this equation doesn't change at all because friction wasn't uh, is, perp is parallel to the plane that's perpendicular so that's going to change this to plus here okay so that changes that to plus and so just some of the equations in the subsequent bit will change so we've got t cos 20 and now it will be minus one fifth t sine 20 for that because it's now minus but it will be minus 4.9 sine 40 minus 4.9 sine 40 plus one fifth 4.9 cos 40 equals zero taking that over to the other side and factorizing out the t so we've got t cos 20 minus one fifth sine 20 equals to 4.9 sine 40 minus one fifth times 4.9 cos 40 Right, so that's um, those are that's uh, the calculations there. So that gives us t. This bit here comes to 0 0.8712, blah blah blah, and that equals to two point. This bit here comes to 2.3989, blah blah blah. So t is equal to those two, those two divided by each other. So that comes to 2.75 newtons. So which um, uh, up the plane to stop it moving down the plane. OK, to stop it moving from down the plane. Uh, we've got for it. That's what we need to stop it doing that. So basically in this situation, 
basically equilibrium exists if t is between those two and these are the kind of limiting values in between this is what limiting friction or limiting equilibrium happens on happens on the boundary so if t is less than 2.75 it'll move down the plane if t, t is more than this it'll move up the plane and if t is in between it stays in equilibrium and the boundary is where it's in limiting equilibrium at the point where it would be equal to obviously these are approximate these are rounded answers but hopefully you get the idea there will be a particular point on the boundary where it's in limiting equilibrium okay so that is that question finished um and hopefully that's useful i said the question was 10 marks i think it was only the first part that was 10 marks and i think the second part has just been added on uh, to the original question okay so that's it and um, we're going to be doing more resolving and it as hopefully you're getting the idea of how important it is to get the original equations correct okay hope you find it useful and let's leave it there if we can get off bye